Hello, and welcome to Be Indie Now, a podcast about independent game development. I'm your host, Tobias Marks, and this is a special episode because I am at the Game Developers Conference. And with me today is... Felipe. Hello, I'm Juan Pedro. I'm the uh, artist of the game, the director. Hi, I'm Alvaro. I'm the sound designer and composer. Hi, I'm Sebastian, and I'm the 3D artist and animator of the game. Excellent. So what's the name of your company, first off? Well, the name of our company is Pomelo Games. Cool. We are an indie game dev studio from Uruguay. So tell me about the game. What's the name of it, first off? Well, the game is called Bullet Boy. Mm -hmm. It's about a kid that lives in a place where people move. The, they move by uh, launching themselves through cannons. Mm -hmm. So kind of uh, like that Donkey Kong uh, style mechanic. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's an action game based on the premise that we are going, we are, we are using, only, using only one button just to launch the cannon. Mm -hmm. It is based on the Donkey Kong barrel mechanics. And you're in fully 3D too. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually it's a 2D game, but with 3D graphics. It's only moves. 2D, it's 2D a, it's gameplay a, in a 3D world. Exactly. It's a platform. It's kind of a side scroller. Yeah. So how long have you been working on it? We've been working it for, uh, on it for a year now. We started on March last year with the first prototype, mm -hmm. which was just a bunch of cubes moving around and shooting one, uh, an, uh, a triangle. Is this the first game of your company? It's actually our second game. Our first game was a Facebook trivia game, mm -hmm. but we, we didn't you know, promote it that much because it was a very small game. This is our first big game. All right, let's, let's step back a bit. How did you guys all meet, first off? Um, well, actually, uh, the developers had uh, the developers had uh, her his company before we appeared. We the, the artist appeared. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. And so then we, I don't. Uh, but can some somebody? Else yeah. Go? All right. Um, the we were four programmers that decided to create a company. Mm -hmm because we were all fed up with our, with our jobs. We all met at college, mm -hmm. so we said, all right, let's screw it, let's just build our own company. Excel excellent reason to yeah. get together. Uh, so we started making web development because that was what we uh, were used to, that's what we were trained for mm -hmm. in our different, uh, on our different jobs, but then we got fed up with it and we love video games, so we, said, like, we, we thought, all right, let's make video games. And then we started meeting the other guys, we started hiring the other guys, which are the artists, which mm -hmm. are friends of us. I mean, that we know that uh, we, love our, we love their work, so we, we, we just hire them. Are you, are you like getting funding, trying to go for the full company thing, are you just offering you know, revenue share percentage, are you doing uh, the partnership deal? Uh, sorry? So are you like finding people to partner up with or did you start hiring people? No, we're hiring. We have four partners, yeah. like the programmers, and then we're hiring people. Um, How are you guys funding yourselves? Are you just bootstrapping it or are you getting any investors? No, we're bootstrapping. We have two of the programmers still make web development, they are still working on the web development mm -hmm. and they can sustain the whole company. Uh, cool. That sounds. Yeah. I mean, that's the way to do it. Whatever you, way you can, and exactly. Not have to give up any ownership. Exactly. I'm not one of them. I mean, uh, the other two guys that that, that w w we owe everything to them. Mm -hmm. To the, uh, those two guys. So you started up. You started making prototypes. Uh, you made this Canon prototype back in March. And you're like, huh, this is pretty cool. Let's start working on it for a year. Yeah. Yeah. More or less. That, more or less like that. I mean, we 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 were already. Um, like we already uh, defined like we wanted to make video games and we started to like uh, think of many ideas this was the, the, the idea that said that said all right this one is way to mobile you know the the canon shooting mechanic mechanics so we started making that prototype we showed it to people people liked it i mean this they played it they they really liked it we, we, we sometimes we couldn't we had to ask our phone back for them. So and what did you have in the prototype? Like how many levels? We only had one level. It was yep. just. What did you have it in 2D or was it 3D back then as well? It was 3D, but without you know, with, with the yeah, pretty basic. It was cubes and yeah. and, and triangles. And with all that, then we started making the, our first like the the character, the main character, and we changed it and the first cannons and well, 
that, how they, how yeah, they I, ju- I just played the game, and it's looking really, really polished. It definitely shows how much work you guys have put into it. Yeah, that, that's all of them, you know, the, 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 the artists. Yeah, so let's talk about the art for a second. Like, right. It has a very kind of a cel-shaded art style, uh, which I like a lot. Like, Why did you decide to go for that? How we decided that? Um, um, I don't remember exactly. We made uh, quite a lot of, of experiments in the in the process. Uh, at first, uh, Juan Pedro uh, ex- experimented a lot with the with the different palettes, with the different uh, you know the colors we were going to to use, and and we were changing them a, a little bit together with the programmers because they we are making it in Unity, but uh, we are using custom shaders that they program programmed together with us. So we could get like that look that mm-hmm. we were we weren't looking for it at first, but we we found that it worked very well with with the with the world that we were creating. Mm-hmm. So, were, were you inspired by like certain animations or cartoons? Like I know I look at, every time I see cel shade, I always think of like those old Cartoon Network stuff. Um, but I don't know what kind of stuff you guys uh, um, were watching in Europe and. I, I don't think so because we don't we have have not been watching those kind that kind of cartoons for a while so I think that it's more based in the experience we had making our pieces of art before you know mm-hmm. um, I worked in animations in in advertising and other projects and Juan Pedro is always drawing and and making different kind of I don't know experiments with it. How, how long did you say it's, it's taken you to do the art in the game uh, uh, out of that year? Is it like you've been working on it the whole year or you say you got it done in about the six month range or? No, no, no. Almost all the time we are working. Yeah. 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 Almost since day one. How, how much has it changed in that year process? Have you ever like scrapped it and started over or has it been kind of just a steady move towards a goal? I think it, it was a steady move because uh, anything that we change it's like a one step, uh, one step further from uh, in what we had achieved in in the look that we were getting, and we never uh, had like something that we didn't like and we had to erase it and start again. We we like always tweaking it a little. Always iterating on it, making better. Yeah. One step at a time. What about uh, yeah. the design? Has the design of the game changed since the initial prototype, or was that really solid from day one? No, the design changed quite a bit actually because we we don't have that much experience designing games. We are mostly mm-hmm. programmers and players. You know, we are we are all players, but we learn a lot about game design and the rules. And for instance, when we started making the game, there were we, we, we were like making it like what we liked and very extremely hard extremely hard game that we liked and we when we showed it to people it was like unplayable mm-hmm. and a lot of stuff like yeah it's really easy to like design a game that's way too hard because you as the, the designers have played it so often you're like huh, oh, this is too easy yeah yeah or, or stuff that for instance ah you didn't understand it like I mean, you yeah. think of something like you think it seems obvious. Like oh yeah, you just need to put another hundred hours into it, like I have. Then this level yeah, is easy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly like that. So, I mean, the design changed a lot. I mean, from from the from the first prototype, and uh, we are still changing it. I mean, there are, we, for instance, there are we, we we look back at the first levels and it's like, all right, we have to redo all of this, or we have to tweak all this. Not not redo, but tweak all this. Like make it easier make it more understandable, make it more evident, some, some stuff more evident, some, stuff, some, some other stuff more subtle. It's like we learned a lot in the whole process. I mean, our new levels are way better than, our, than, than the first ones, mm-hmm. and we know it. How, how many people would you say you play-tested play the game with? Like you have like a few select friends, or you've been getting as many people as you can? It's, it's been with friends mostly, but it's around, I don't know, 30 people. That's, that's a pretty small sample group, yeah, actually. Yeah, it is, yeah. But yeah, you're definitely getting to the point where you should start growing that up as, as much as possible. Have you yeah. thought about like just getting it out in public and having people play test it, not just you know game developers, yeah. and friends, and family? Yeah, yeah. We thought about it. We still need to to get a analytic solution up 
so it is more useful. Yeah, you get that hard but, data behind it. Yeah, but we are we are we are already taking taking uh, uh, how you say it a submission for beta. No, mm -hmm. I don't uh, we are we are taking a, a, a beta applications. Yeah, uh, that's that right. Beta yeah. applications on our on our web page. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so like, what kind of you know pre-release marketing have you done? You know, you're asking for beta stuff. Are you you know having a Twitter or Facebook page? Are you posting videos? Sorry. All right, what kind of marketing are you doing for pre-release? Are you Posting videos. We have Facebook. a Facebook page. We have a, the trailer that we're posting everywhere we can, and yeah. we're showing our game. We're trying to show our game in, on, on every forum and community. Like we still haven't um, hit everything, but we're because we, we are not the marketing type of guys. You know, we are yeah. programmers and artists. It's yeah. not like we, we don't have any business guy. In, in, in yeah, the, it's something to learn, right? You know, you spend all this time learning one skill, and you're like, oh wait, now I got to learn design. I got to learn how to do monetization. Market. Yeah, exactly. Like, now I got to do marketing. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Coming here to GDC, for instance, and start to show. I mean, I've never showed the game to people I don't know before now, and, and just meeting strangers yeah. and saying, hey, hey, play my game. Like, it's very new to me. Everything. So, you, now, have you guys been to GDC before? Or is this your first one? No, it's our first time. That that's amazing. Like I. I love GDC. It is so yeah. great. I'm glad you guys got out here because it's just really, really inspiring to talk to other developers and you find so much about your game and everyone's willing to play test it. Everyone's willing to give you feedback. I know like me personally after like on Tuesday night, I was just so inspired. I went home and even though I was like got home at like 11.30 p.m., I just worked for three hours on a prototype I've been playing with for a couple of months because like, ah, I just I need to work on this game right now. I have yeah. to strike when the iron's yeah. hot with, for uh, inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it pumps you up, like. Yeah, are you guys staying in uh, San Francisco area lawn, or are you just here for the show? Um, we're here f until Saturday. We're, ha we're here just for GDC. Uh, and then we go back. Some, some of us are going back to our country. Mm -hmm. Others are going, I'm, I'm going personally to LA. Others are going to Miami. It's like, we're... we're Cool. Yeah, make your most out of the trip here. What? Make your most out of the trip here. You yeah, know, of course. Well. Just, just make the most of it. Yeah, yeah so... What's game development like when you guys are from? Do you know other game developers, or is there a good community where you guys are from? In Uruguay, yeah, it's a great community. I mean, there are lots of game dev studios, like, for instance, well, uh, Iron High Games, like mm -hmm. the guys from Kingdom Rush, yeah, and uh, Bolpin Monster, and others, Calio. And we are all a very tight community that, for instance, we get together like once um, every month or every two months for oh, that's a barbecue. That's really good, yeah. Every the game developer, and we came all together here. I mean, there are the how, how many people usually uh, meet up in that meeting? Like it, it depends. Sometimes it depends on the on the availability. But for instance, there was one with forty people. Mm -hmm. Like we are a small country, a three million people country. We are very small, but yeah, now forty is a good turnout actually. For yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. So you guys are here. You're showing off the game. What's the next steps? What do you guys need to do next to get this out on the market and be number one? Well, first, finish our game. Yeah. I mean, we are, we are so what, what needs to be done to make it finished? We, well, just we are, we are ready. We already find the art and the gameplay, so we just need to fi to, to to make more levels. I mm -hmm. mean, we have 15 levels. We aim for 40 level launch, and after that, well, decide if self-publish or go with a publisher or look what to do. Mm -hmm. So, why are you considering a publisher? Well, because we are scared, actually, <laughs> because we don't know how to move ourselves on this market. We don't know what needs to be done. Every time we talk to someone, for instance, they mention something new like uh, chart boosters or stuff mm -hmm. like, I don't know, um, ads and stuff like that. Yeah, that whole user acquisition space and everything. Yeah, getting featured yeah. and stuff that... You got you to gotta watch for sharks in that space. I was talking to you before the show about that, too. You, you, there's a lot of people out there who are take money from you and be like, oh, yeah, I'll be your marketing guy. And then they'll like write a press release, put us on a blog, send it to like a thousand emails that go into a thousand spam folders, and they, they're just walking away with your money. So it's really hard to like yeah. know which advertising guys know what they're doing if you yourself aren't sure what to do, right? So it kind of comes down to having to take the time to study marketing and, and study how to get your name out there. Yeah, yeah. It, it's... It's not easy for us because, uh, as I said before, we are not the, the, the business kind of time. Mm -hmm. So we have to uh, put balance the working on the game. Like I'm a programmer, so I, I need to work on the game. But at the same time, I'm I need to come here and talk to people and find out what to do. It's like it's it's harder than we expected, like mm -hmm. that part. But it's fun. 
So uh, what, what have you learned so far at the show? Well, what we learn, what we, what we actually find out uh, we made a lot of contacts and we made a lot of people like uh, that are interested in our game. Mm -hmm. What we learned is that you have to ask to show your game to everyone. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter um, if it's just a developer, media people, or just someone with, a, with the GDC tag because you don't know who, who that person knows. For instance, I met you because we talked to another developer who introduced us. Yeah, exactly. I mean, every, the games industry is so small, everybody knows everybody. You yeah. Know, as soon as you know a couple people, you start knowing more and you know more. It's a very social space because there's just not a lot of us around. And luckily, we're a really friendly bunch. Yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of people out there, very important people that, that, are, interest, that, are, that are interested in finding things about games. And if you have a good game, just, mm -hmm. well, this is the best place to meet that, those people. So what's your next steps to get more levels, get them done? Is it just a matter of you, all you guys are going to sit down with your tools and make more? Or you need to find another level designer and hire somebody else? Like, what, what, what's your goal to get it done? No, it's just sitting down and make more, make more stuff. It's like we, we, have a, we have been working very well lately. I mean, a steady, we have a steady workflow getting, like, mm -hmm. uh, it was better. At the beginning, it was some kind of slow, but now that we got the pace of it, we are we're getting good at it. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's it. That, that's what we need. Have you developed any tools to help you make levels, help them lay them out? Or are you just doing whatever within Unity? No, we make a lot of tools. Uh, Unity is very, it's great for that. You know, it lets you modify its whole editor for mm -hmm. that. So we make, for instance, just a small example. We uh, all of all of our canons have a trajectory. So when you put one, you can select. For instance, all right, put uh, one coin every certain distance over this trajectory. Oh, that's very handy. So we don't have to manually put all of the coins. Have, have you thought about making a level editor within the game itself or making those level tools available to the public? We actually did. Uh, it would be a great, uh, it would be a great um, thing to do, but we have a, a performance issue. We will have a performance issue there. There are a lot. Of, we, we, we are using a lot of tricks on each level. We are trying to reduce polygon counts. Mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to reduce uh, draw calls at every you know step of every level. We have a lot of polygons. We have a lot, a lot of art, and we take into consideration almost like every frame of the game. Yeah. Every and that kind of optimization is really hard. Yeah. Yeah. We, we make uh, a lot of stuff. There is a have, lot of pre-processing. Have, have you had problems with your performance when you didn't do that? That provoked it, or are you just trying yeah. to be? Oh we yeah, had, we had a lot of performance issues. Like we had to take performance into into account and from um, to make it run on, for instance, some other devices like Galaxy S2 or or, or, or iPhone 4, for instance. Mm -hmm. It's so. Is that is that because you have too many objects? It's your lighting. What's what's bogging down the processing? Uh, a lot of stuff, for instance. Since uh, is, we are very focused on art on the game, mm -hmm. for instance, the, shade, the cell shading takes a lot of bandwidth. Yeah. The, we have a lot of polygons. Uh, we have a lot of, anim of uh, dynamic stuff moving around, like, for instance, the canons that are always moving with the cell shading. We have our main character and um, all the coins, all, everything in 3D. Um, for all, all of that like, becomes a a hog on the on the system. Um, well, we have we made a lot of improvements, like optimize our shaders. Like I don't know how technical this can be, but uh, as technical as you want it to be. All right, changing everything. To I'm fix interested. I'm, all right. I'm technical. All right, changing every 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 shader variable to fixed, for instance, was mm -hmm. a, a, a huge improvement. Or as I said, baking. You know, we we put a lot of dynamic objects, a, a lot of objects around, and then we run a pre-processing step that bakes everything into a huge mesh and we break it down on you know on for instance like we squeeze that we break all those meshes down in a grid like for instance so we don't get more than uh, four draw calls of uh, static meshes in, in, in the same in the same frame mm -hmm. that kind of stuff yeah that sounds great so like, have you tried te uh, to do tests where you put as many cannons and objects in a level as possible? 
Sorry? Have you tried to do a test where you like probably put as many cannons in the yeah, level? Yeah, that, that's what we do to, to optimize. We fill yeah. everything with cannons and then start moving, you know, tricking stuff until it works. Yeah, so like, what's your longest, largest level? Like, well, give an idea of like what kind of poly counts or object counts there is here. We are around, uh, how, what was the, the, the poly count limit that uh, exists? Uh, 20,000 poly counts per... 20,000 20, 20, 20, polygons at the same time. That's what we, mm -hmm. we, are, we are aiming at Very right cool. now. So, oh, that's what you're, you're getting right now or you're aiming to be at? Uh, that's, what, that's what our game, that's what we optimized for. I mean, if we show more than that, yeah. the game starts to slow down. Cool. So, and you find that that's enough to get a good level going? Yeah, 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 especially because of the art style, you know? It's yeah. a simple art style that looks good. That simple cell shaded look. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want to talk a bit about your trailer, too, because, like, you have a, a playable demo right now. With yeah. The, how many levels did you say is this? 15 or? So, yeah, 15. Yeah, and what I thought was really, really cool and really smart of you guys is you didn't just make a video trailer and you didn't just make, here's, you know, my gameplay, but you have, like, a uh, little intro video, and in between each levels, you have some text describing the game, and it, you c it said like the trailer on it instead of demo. And I thought that was a cool way to phrase things. It's not here's this trial, but you know, play the demo of the game, and so it makes it seem like oh, I play this, and like oh, great, I want to play your big game, and you know, that's kind of what you got right now. But it's a really good pitch. Yeah, it, it was. It, it came when from we had a demo. We had a demo with five, uh, with ten levels. That is the, the most polished thing we have. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we started to show it in different conferences around in Argentina and Uruguay. Wh which we, conferences? Uh, the EVA conference in Argentina, and when we won the the national game contest in Uruguay. And oh, congrats! Yeah, yeah. That, that's why we came here because we won the, the oh, very cool the, the ticket. The price was the the ticket to the GDC. Oh, that's that's amazing. That's yeah. great. So, the when we started to show the demo, we find ourselves like changing the level a lot. You know, like oh, now you have to see this feature. Now you have to see this feature. Now you have to see how this looks. Mm -hmm. So we said, all right, let's. It, it has to be like a trailer. Yeah. You know, in a trailer you show like uh, small stuff that matters. Mm -hmm. You know, like to get to get to get to get you excited. So. Yeah, and, uh, summarizing like the the key parts of the game, the the parts in which the the art shows best and in which the mechanics shows best, and put them all together, one after another. Yeah, that, and that's great because was you was your hope that you'd show it to a publisher and they'd be interested in it, or is that just like you wanted to make it the best presentation possible? I guess it's both, right? Yeah, it's it's actually both. It's like. The thing is, when we we want to show it to people, we just wanted to show you uh, most the, the, mm -hmm. the most art, the most mechanics, everything fast, and we thought, well, that's like a trailer, so make, let's make a playable trailer. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're still on the line if you want to get a publisher or not. You're you're looking at one because you're afraid of this, you know, the mobile space and how hard it is in the marketing. Yeah, exactly. But you know, I want to encourage you guys. You absolutely can go without a publisher. You're going to find so many indies here that don't have publishers at are doing just fine. Very, very good even. Um, have you guys had a chance to check out the IGF pavilion? Yeah, we went there. We, we Yeah, that's that's the place where you're going to find a lot of indies who are doing some amazing, amazing stuff. And some of those indies are making a lot of money on their games now. Uh, and they just had the award show yesterday. Uh, and a lot of good, good winners there. And those games are, like I would say, it's very important if you guys get the talk to those developers and share their stories and their, their development and how they got the word of their game out there and yeah, how sure. they uh, spread it because a lot of them didn't pay very much if they did paid anything at all. So and a lot of them didn't pay very much for marketing if they paid anything at all. It's just building uh, a community. I, I haven't I haven't talked to them about I, I've been playing their games and talking about the, more of the development. I haven't talked to them about marketing. Yeah, but but we talked to a lot of people and it's like we haven't decided yet. It's like it seems like a, a very competitive market right now, especially yeah. mobile. I mean, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, there's a lot of games, so it's really hard to stand above the pack. But if you have quality, it's it's not as hard actually, because a lot of those games that are out there, they don't stand out. You really need to stand out to your competition and just be. It's kind of hard to say, but you have to not make any mistakes at all. If you have 
a really great game, it's beautiful, and then you just don't post a lot on blogs or Twitter and get people to come to your game or you have a description that is not as good as it could be or you release on a awkward day like a Monday and you don't get a whole lot of downloads. You know, if you every one of those little mistakes will be very very effective in a negative way towards your success of your app. So the trick is to not just the trick is to make no mistakes, but that doesn't mean that you have to get it perfect the first time around. It means that you have to constantly iterate. You have to recognize when you're making a mistake and then immediately correct it, patch it, update it, change your methods, do whatever you need to take, no matter how hard it is, and keep going. That's why I uh, would recommend, there was a talk at GDC at the Indie Summits on um, Antichamber by Alexander, oh, and I should look up his name, Alexander Bruce, uh, I forgot his last name, sorry about that, but it was a really good talk and he talked about his experience mostly about marketing himself, mostly about getting himself out there and how it took seven years to get Antichamber where it was and the millions of dollars success that it became. So I recommend to you guys earlier, but I really want to tell people on the show that that is a talk that if you have access to GXC Vault, you'll definitely want to check out that talks exactly about this. All right, we will. So thank you guys very, very much for sitting down to me. You know, we're trying to awkwardly sit in on the hallway <laughs> right now talking yeah. about the game. But let's talk about something a bit more fun. Let's talk about games we've been playing lately, not just games making. Uh, and since I've been on the sh uh, going to the show here, I've been commuting on the Caltrain, which means that I'm pulling out my DS a lot. And because there's so many game developers, I've been playing a lot of the Street Pass games again. There's that flower collecting one. I know it's kind of lame where if you uh, walk by, people also have a 3DS. You get uh, the Street Pass tags and you can you know, fight farmies and warriors way and it's a little shoot up game. So I've been playing that a lot this week since I've been tagging hundreds of people. What about you guys? What kind of games have been inspiring you to play lately? Well, the latest two games I, I, I played were The Stanley Parable, which mm -hmm. I found is That's great. a really fun one. Yeah, also, I mean, I have a discussion with Juan Pedro here, a long time discussion about games and toys, you know, mm -hmm. like simulations and games. He, so I'm, I'm like the guy who's the more uh, programmer kind of guy. Like this is, if you can't win, you're not playing a game, mm -hmm. you know. And then he gave me, he he, he gifted me the Stanley Parable for my birthday, and uh, I'm impressed with it. And it's, I it's changed, just so funny, I changed right? my mind. I it reads my mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, it knows what I'm thinking. It's like. It's a great experience. Yeah, it, it's just it shows how clever dialogue and good writing can yeah. really change an experience. Exactly, and I, I and I'm a, fa a, a, big, a huge fan of comedy, and I laughed my ass off with it. Mm -hmm. It's it's great. Um, also, I've been playing Outlast. Mm -hmm. Do you know the horror game? No, I haven't been playing. Well, it's a horror game made. I don't know which studio is it. It's a horror game. It's an indie horror game made in the Unreal Engine, so it looks you know very triple A kind yeah. of, uh, but it, it is, I, I love horror games, and I love to get, to, to be scared, and this game is great, it's like, you don't shoot anyone, you just run away, I'm, an amnesia totally kind of. Like, that sounds like my cup of tea, what was it called again? Outlast. I'll, I will be looking it up later. Alright, it's like an amnesia kind of game, you know, the, yeah. the last, the, and it, it, it really, it, it, you, you're always looking with a, uh, with a camera in a constrained environment, you you just don't you 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 don't know what 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 what, what lies around you. What what is and it's great atmosphere. It's a very scary game. I love it. Sounds cool. All right. uh, what about you guys? What have you been playing lately? Well, le uh, the last game I played that I was really amazed about was the Swapper. Mm -hmm. Do you heard I about that? No, I haven't played that one. The yet. Swapper is a science fiction game. Uh, where the, you're a guy, you're in a in an empty ship, mm -hmm. and you have this weapon. You found this weapon that uh, makes a copy of yourself, and you can make that copy in one place and just teletransport yourself to that copy, and you can do that like four times. Mm -hmm. And for that, you're like resolving different puzzles. And it's, I was pretty amazed by, by, by the mood of the game. And it's all made of uh, clay and traditional materials. Oh, wow, that sounds it's, really interesting. Yeah, it is. What, what platforms is it on? What? What platforms? Uh, it's for, for PC and Mac. Okay. I think so. I don't know if it's for anything else. But um, 
the it's swapper pretty cool, it's called? Pretty, yeah, yeah, the swapper. I, I got to check and out my game. It's game's amazing like. because uh, it has this like thing about cloning. So you're cloning yourself all the time and killing the other guys that that you're uh, that you are cloned from. Yeah. yeah, and it's pretty amazing. The art is amazing. The music, the sound, it's incredible. The other game that I play sometimes is Stalker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stalker's good. I played uh, that one. Yeah, I'm I'm hooked to that one. And it's pretty pretty awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Um, well, um, I play a bunch of different games, but right now I'm uh, lot into the immersive games, mm -hmm. like uh, and audio games. Since well, I'm a, an audio designer, so uh, Papa Sangre, Silent Dage. Uh, that kind of games. Uh, now I'm trying the Device 6 game, which mm -hmm. is... Oh man, Device 6. Yeah. I just finished that myself. Right. I'm a little late to the game, but man. Yeah, I, I just uh, got it yesterday after the, the party, and I started playing through it like five minutes, and I and I said to myself, well, I need some time to figure this out because this, yeah, it's, it's this really is not a casual game. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's very <laughs> yeah. unique. I yeah, like it that. is. So yeah, that that, that kind of game yeah. right now, and it's got really good audio design in it. Like oh, different yeah. moments of. Oh there. yeah, I'm definitely. thinking the the garden scene in particular. I don't know if you got to that part yet. So I won't spoil. No, how I it just works. played five minutes into it. it. Yeah, it, ha it has these moments where it's just like it gets really creepy, and it sets this tone yeah. so well just from these really creepy audio cues. Right. So. Mm, well, the last game I played, uh, which blew totally blew my mind, was Luxuria Superbia. I uh, another one I haven't played. You guys have really interesting games. It's great. I need to <laughs> like catch up my list. <laughs> well, Luxuria Superbia uh, is made by by uh, how does Tale of Tales. Yeah, and I don't know how how to how to tell you about this game because it's a very feeling uh, driven game. Mm -hmm. You, it's it's like an experience in which you have to pollinize a flower. Mm -hmm. Or something like that. It's something like that. You're, you're like. I, I don't know how to tell you. It's very yeah. hard to describe. But it's, I'll, I'll it's take your word for it. You're making a good recommendation. It's very beautiful. It's it's, it's very immersive. Uh, you know, I I the last two nights I've played it in in my bed with yeah. with my with my tablet mm -hmm. and with my headphones on with the volume all the way up, and and it's, it's amazing. Really amazing. <laughs> Um, well, the uh, other games I've been playing were uh, Wakamidi, for example. Mm -hmm. Wakamidi, which has a, an amazing art, a, a very cool design, and is very funny. Very funny and very fun, fun to play because the, the fighting mechanics are very well done and are like endless. You can make huge combos and it's very fun. Sounds great. Yeah, that, 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 there's a great list of games there that a lot I haven't played yet, so I need to catch up on my list. I've been way too busy to, uh, playing <laughs> the latest games because you know it's important to play games as well as make them because you know what other people are doing, you know yeah, what's fun, you know what's good. You get so much inspiration. Yeah, exactly. And then what's great is you know you play them and you go to a place like here at GDC, you can meet a lot of those game developers and talk to them about their games. So uh, definitely a really good combination. Um, if you want to find out more about me and my stuff, uh, you can go to tobiamarks.com. That's where I have my blog with different inf informational posts that hopefully you might find useful. You can follow me on Twitter, yeah, cool. at Tobiah Marks. Uh, where can people listening find you guys? Well, you can find us at our webpage, bulletboygame.com. Bullet mm -hmm. Also on Facebook, Bullet Boy Game, and on Twitter, Bullet Boy Game. Excellent. What about you guys? Got personal Twitter accounts? Uh, yeah, my Twitter account is, <laughs> it's hard to say because in Sp it's in Spanish, F-E-L-I-P-E-S-O-C. Uh, I don't use a Twitter, but you could check my <laughs> my Tumblr. Um, yeah, go ahead and plug no, it. Better, uh, better try my blog. It's uh, Blogspot, it's Bati, V-A-T-A -A yeah. dot Juanpe, V-A-T-I dot uh, J E. U I M P E. Okay, that's it. I want the. Yeah. Uh, you can check my Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> that work. And yeah, you can check my Facebook page also because <laughs> I don't know. I'm 
I'm more interested in the in the Tumblr of uh, Bullet Boy because we have a Tumblr. Uh, I oh mean, yeah, definitely. The web page is, is based mm -hmm. on Tumblr, mm -hmm. and we update um, like the different stages of the development in there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we'll have the the links in the show notes. So if you uh, scroll down, if you're looking at the on yeah. page, you have make links sure to down. make sure to like us on Facebook because uh, that's where we we publish the the updates mm -hmm. uh, of the time get the latest news and all that yes uh, perfect and if you want to find more about the show you can go to beindynow.com where you get past episodes those show notes i was just mentioning um you can also follow the show on twitter uh at be Indie now uh thank you guys very very much for talking with me all right thank you man go out there and make some games <laughs> oh, we, we. <laughs>